It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. A mighty wind, also known as Almighty Wind, which is run by Elizabeth Elijah Nicomaya, has the traits of being not only a religion or a spirituality, but of being a cultic organization. What does every cult organization actually need? Well, ideally, a cult organization needs a cult leader. Elizabeth Elijah fits the bill. She calls herself a pastor, a prophetess, a seer of the future. She claims to have direct communication with God, whether through some kind of visionary process or through incredibly vivid dreams. Of course, because she is in communication with all-knowing power in the form of God, she can never be wrong. Never, not never. And it's ridiculous, because the followers of her recognize this rule, so even when she fails, there's a handy excuse which can be brought forward almost immediately. She makes these prophecies, many of them, and she gets them wrong. And then to avoid getting it wrong and being seen to be a quack, she goes back and changes what the prophecies were. Members of the organization like Yar Servant 777 are willing to falsely flag videos, file bogus copyright claims, and if you should decide to counterclaim a copyright claim, they have been known to drop people's docs. That's to say, spread their personal information, their real name, their address, their telephone number, in order to silence a critic. As with many beliefs, they claim to be the true Christianity the true religion, the one true religion, in actual fact. They have no proof. They have no evidence. It's simply claimed by the group leader, and therefore to the following, it must be true. After all, how could it not be true? Elizabeth Elijah claims to have seen prophecies from God, that must be evidence that she is truly in communion with God and therefore righteous and therefore what she says is correct and therefore her religion, whatever you wish to call it, must be the right religion. It's very easy to believe that when you're in a cult mentality like the followers of a mighty wind truly are. As with any religion, there is a level of thought reform. There is a level of manipulation in regard to belief. An idea imposed. The idea is something more specific in A Mighty Wind. Basically, rather than simply being a question of a belief in a higher power and following a number of fairly sensible traditions and rules. You have a leader who speaks on behalf of God. You have an inner group who promotes that idea. And you have the outer group 
who are controlled by the inner group. And they, as a result, work in a very cultic way, ensuring that those within the group itself are kept in line. The inner group are devout, the outer group are controlled by the inner group, and the inner group work on behalf of the leader. Without considerable interference, this kind of system can become incredibly powerful, as we've seen with other beliefs, like Scientology. It should be remembered that the most simple of systems can be the most efficient. Simply having a leader promoting ideas to a sceptical crowd doesn't always lead anywhere unless they're hugely charismatic. In a case of the mighty wind, you have the leader, you have the inner group, and you have them passing on the system. So not all the pressure is on one person, but they're still the one with the levers of power. It's still a control system. It's still about power. And it's about direct manipulation of all members. Rather than a religion with a central organisation, a elected or chosen leader, you have a leader who's chosen themselves and imposed themselves upon the group with absolute power which is conducted by their very own well, thought police, you might say. What is that if not a cultic organisation? A Mighty Wind is a conspiracy theory cult and a doomsday cult. They believe in Illuminati, Satanic, Freemasonic, New World Order. They believe in doomsday events, which are part of the end times. They've even mentioned in the past the actuality, no joke, but an actuality of a coming zombie apocalypse or the arrival of Naburu. Clearly this is a strange organisation, but beyond these ridiculous beliefs, what you have is a desire for money and power. And that's the real game the cult leader plays. It's to do with getting the power from the people, ensuring they keep you in your silken garments as cult leader. And for a large part, it works. Well, that may have hit the big time, but it's still a bunch of bullshit.